This isn't just a make Marvin watch episode. This is a make every motherfucker watch because I haven't seen it. You haven't I seen just, it. Nope. Marvin hasn't seen it. We're missing the only person yeah. that's seen it. So this is going to be interesting. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. This could be a little <laughs> bit tough. Yeah. Because I know no, I knew nothing about the, the show yeah. going into it. I knew nothing about the books or whatever it was. Yeah. Not none of the lore. Yeah. So I And I now went, you barely know any actor because they don't really explain shit. My planet Arrakis is so beautiful when the sun is low. Rolling over the sands, you can see spice in the air. The outsiders ravage our lands in front of our eyes. Dune is like... It's like the sci-fi, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's largely recognized as like one of, if not the best, like pieces of sci-fi like ever made. I'm not going to lie. I had zero interest in watching this movie. I'm into sci-fi, but I'm not into like deep sci-fi. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I thought this would be the perfect sci-fi movie to watch, but it seems like this movie was made for Dune fans specifically. Uh, Yeah, it does seem like it was very fan oriented. Now, again, I don't know anything about the book so i'm only gonna yeah. talk about the movie as a movie alone it was like hardcore sci-fi this was like oh yeah this was like hardcore porn but for sci-fi you're people. ten thousand, bro yeah this shit is crazy it's crazy so, it's weird that you say that because <laughs> i went into it not knowing like i said yeah i fucking loved it oh okay i thought the movie was great I don't get me wrong fantastic but I did struggle a little bit. There are I some... thought it was great. It was hard to follow some of it. I had to look up a lot of yeah. stuff I, afterwards. I was, anytime I had to pause it to go into a meeting, I, all I could think about <laughs> was going back to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Which is a good sign. Yeah. It stars Timothy Chalamet as uh, main character Paul Atreides. Rebecca Ferguson plays his mom, Lady Jessica Atreides. Zendaya as Shani. Oscar mm -hmm. Isaac, who we mentioned earlier. We all love yeah. Oscar Isaac. Duke Leto Atreides. Jason Momoa is in this, Duncan Idaho, guess, Stellan yeah. Skarsgård, Josh Brolin, Javier Bardem, Dave Bautista. <laughs> yeah. there, it, there's a lot of people in this. I can't really name them all. It's basically Game of Thrones in space. It's the, <laughs> it's the story of a noble family, the Atreides family with Timothy Chalamet and Oscar Isaac and all them. The universe is controlled by an emperor. There is this specific planet that has a material they Arrakis, call Arrakis, wasn't it? Arrakis, Spice. yeah. Arrakis Spice. is the planet, a sand planet, and it has a very rare material in the sand they call spice. And Tatooine. It, Tatooine, yeah. <laughs> Imagine. Oh, yeah, a lot of similarities here. Yeah. Uh, spice has uh, psychoactive properties to it, so it makes you hallucinate and shit, uh, but also for, it's like unlocks the key to like space in, travel, intergalactic yeah. space travel and stuff like that. So it's a very hot commodity. And, and immortality, apparently. And immortality. Even they don't explain that much. It's very, like, feudalistic is the way, like, the, the universe is ran. And he appoints uh, dukes to basically be, like, vassals of this planet. And they are in charge of the spice gotcha. mining and all this stuff. And mm -hmm. on the planet of Arrakis are actual people, uh, natives of Arrakis, and they're constantly at war with um, the powers that are, like, sort of controlling the planet. Right. And by the time this movie, we, we arrive here, um, one power is leaving and our main family is actually being sent there to replace them. But it's all a setup. It's all a setup. And that's that's like the source of the conflict. We are introduced right away to Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, who's actually played by our boy Skarsgård there, Stellan Skarsgård. He's running the shit on Arrakis. And what it's fly. called... What's that? Yeah, he could hover with his fucking little back plugs or whatever the fuck those <laughs> things are. But they're getting replaced with the Atreides family. And the Atreides family, we meet them. They they seem like they're fucking hot shit in the universe. They're like super high royalty. tech. They're like giga royalty. They live on yeah. an ocean planet that's like lush <laughs> and, and fucking dope. They're, they're at war. Centuries long war with the other faction. So there's going to be some conflict here on Arrakis. And again, that's why I say it. it's basically space Game of Thrones. So who knows if Game of Thrones <laughs> well, kind of ripped this shit off. That was the one thing I loved about it. Because I'm Probably. a big, obviously being British and... You, you know, know all about Europe, feudalism. Europe. Well, I'm all about... I'm a big... <laughs> I'm big into my history. And I think this is why I loved it so much. It's nice. just kind of crossed over. If, and you guys might or may, may or not, may not know this, but they kind of crossed over multiple um, eras of time in European oh. history. So oh, the, 
so it was like the the Roman Empire, the Holy Roman Empire, mm -hmm. and like even the the British feudal system. They kind of merged them all together. That's why if you looked at the Atreides family, it was all very Roman. It was legionnaires. Yeah. Mm. It was the Spanish bull. You've mm -hmm. seen the bull represented so many times, and that was a big thing for the Romans back in the day. I don't know if you remember Gladiator and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, what yeah. All, that's what it was all about. And it was, and then they were bringing in the feudal system with the fiefdoms, and they kind of crossed them all over and it was kind of it was as you were about to allude to it's like the atreides family were getting too good at what they did yeah so they were kind <laughs> of being set up to fail because they were like these That's guys right. are like you get like these guys are becoming too popular they're being too efficient they're being too well respected mm -hmm. from the other from the other noble families let's fuck them over and get rid of them yes. yeah so even in the year ten thousand, the working class just can't catch a break i guess nope they can't. <laughs> Dad, what if I'm not the future of House Atreides? A great man doesn't seek to lead. He's called to it. But if your answer is no, you'll still be the only thing I ever needed you to be. My son. But our story is about Paul Atreides, played by Timothy Chalamet. Now, this guy's having fucking dreams and nightmares and all sorts of crazy shit, but we actually, as the yeah. movie goes on, we, we learn that they're just visions of his future self, and, and we're starting to put the puzzle pieces together as the movie goes on. But his mom, who was played by Rebecca Ferguson, who was great, by the way, she's part of a faction... And they are a faction of women. They are basically like witches, I guess, for lack of a better description. They have the ability to sort of like control people's minds with uh, by changing the pitch of their voice when they say a command. So they they sort of operate as like a shadow government. And uh, Lady Jessica, she's not even married to Duke Leto, Oscar Isaac's character. She's basically like... Uh, I forget the term for it, but concubine. She, concubine. There you go. Glorified mistress. <laughs> yeah, but in the movie, you get the sense that they actually loved each other. That's why she broke away from her group's laws and and gave him a boy because he wanted to carry on his legacy, his family legacy. He mm. says at one point in the film, "I should have married you." So they clearly loved each mm. other, and it was more yeah. than just the concubine type of relationship. But she the group was pissed about that when she did that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They were. Yeah, they were highly they were pissed upset. that she had a boy, but that's they were pissed lot. that she had a boy, and they yeah. were pissed that she passed on her teachings to her boy because he has her powers and she's training right. him throughout the movie. Which made it sound like she had a choice of what she could have, which I found was interesting. Hey, it is the year ten thousand. It is. It's very progressive in the year ten thousand. <laughs> but no, she went against her that like the, that groups, the Jesuits, or whatever yeah. you want to say. She went against their like rules. That's why. The old bitch showed up and was like, all right, well, you had a fucking boy and he's like super powerful. So I'm going to put him through right. the most pain anybody's ever felt to test his fucking willpower. Right. I mean, I hey, it was a great if scene. they could influence people with their voices, they probably can decide if they're having a girl or a boy child. <laughs> In yeah. Some way or another. Well, for sure. You, they can. Yeah. That, that yeah. I, that's what I took from it. You like. All right, well, spoiler, I read it. They can <laughs> force themselves to have a specific sex. Oh, okay, they can. Okay, I didn't yeah. see that. I didn't read that. So she know. very I much... Assumed. Yeah, I assumed. I assumed too, yeah. She very much chose to have a boy, but she chose because of her, I guess, relationship with Duke Leto. Um, because she's, like, balancing... Normally, with, with royal families, they need a boy to run because the boy... Carry on the name. The heir to the... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Um, But... Uh, so, yeah, so this story is very much Paul's, and he is having visions of his future. He's sort of coming into his powers. And when the big the big setup is finally done, like, his fucking entire empire is murdered, with the exception of, like, a few survivors. And he's he becomes, he's, like, forced into becoming the heir to his father's throne. One point that confused me about the movie is, like... He, it's kind of obvious that he knew he was going into a setup and they knew that we've been sabotaged. They said the equipment had been damaged and whatnot. Yeah. And how easy it was for this setup to take place. I don't know the depth of what other characters know about what Paul is going through, but he's having visions of himself as becoming like this leader, sort of this Messiah this figure. War, yeah. And the leader of a holy war that's being led by the natives of Arrakis. And they the sort of- Freeman. Fremen. The Fremen. I thought Fremen. it was Freeman when I read when I see it. I was like, the Freeman. No, it's the Fremen. Yeah. <laughs> the Freeman have like this messianic figure that they have 
in their folklore. And we're getting some hints that it's probably going to be Timothy Chalamet. Probably. It, it will be. But his... <laughs> if it's not, he's that's basically a He's basically Neo, so he's definitely... Yeah. He's basically <laughs> Neo. But his visions are not really great, right? He's having visions of him right. basically bringing about this holy war that, like brings the get the universe to ruin where he really wants to sort of very early on when he learns that his father died and he knows that he's now the duke he's like all right well i want to go make a deal with the emperor and i want to take his place and i will bring you guys fucking peace here on arrakis uh you have my word like he's ready to go like that's his that's that's what he wants but he seems to be having this inner battle between like what his visions are telling him is going to happen and what he wants to happen so that'll be interesting to see play out there's something happening to me. There's something awakening in my mind. I can't control it. What did you see? <sighs> There's a crusade coming. I thought the movie was actually kind of boring for like the first hour and a half. Yeah, up until half up sure. until the attack happened. Yeah. I, I disagree. I actually really enjoyed it. I guess it was because of that tie into the different it was certainly like, yeah. interesting, and they had to do... There was a lot of, like, world building they had to do, so I get mm -hmm. it. But I do think it, it it just went on a little bit too long. Once the fight started, it really picked up, and, and that's when the story got, like, really interesting for me. The politics and, like, the power plays and all that stuff was, like, interesting to me. I, I, I thought that was cool. But I'm really interested to see, like, now him go through this, like, desert fucking person training and, like, mm -hmm. basically develop his powers or abilities a little bit more and i really like his relationship with his mom and we forget she's pregnant he yeah kind of gets alluded to a little bit a few times but she's pregnant again you could tell like her family was more important to her than like the fucking witches that she was the working Jesuit. with you know what i mean sure. yeah. she doesn't really treat him like a child like you would think because a lot of other people do treat him like a child i, I noticed that throughout the like movie duncan. duncan and him had like a very like weird relationship i noticed when they like got fucking dumped in the desert they like, she was kind of, like, letting him, like, kind of figure everything out. He was, like, putting the suit together. He was, like, uh, making the plan, and he was, like, doing all that. So I thought that was really cool. I like that. He's got to prove it. He could do it now. I mean, if he can't do that type of shit. Yeah, I mean, he had, he's, like, He's going to fail at his future, right? So. Well, he's a fucking thug because he won a fucking <laughs> knife fight with some well, fucking oh, desert yeah. bring it. <laughs> oh, my I was God, gonna yeah. I was going to bring up against like, Jamis. I was going to bring yeah. that up because... In his vision, it was mm -hmm. like you have to die so you can be reborn. And it shows the vision of him dying. And then it's kind of alludes to him like coming back. So I expected him to go into that fight expecting that he was going to die and he right. needed to die to come back. But then and he had he to kill his like innocent self. That's what I much. thought. Yeah. That is, was that like, what, is that what you thought? Because when I yeah. was watching it, I was like, oh shit, it's like. You need to die and be reborn. So like a like, fucking phoenix. Well, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ character. You know? I oh, kept... like Neo. Oh, Neo, <laughs> like Neo. Neo. Hey. I kept thinking about that line in the beginning of the movie, the text line, dreams or messages from the deep. I don't think his visions are like one-to-one -one representations are, of what's going to happen. I think that very much is a teaching the audience moment that like his visions aren't set in stone. Like he has his own path that he could carve out really noticeable to me that under the direction of a different filmmaker i think this movie could have been a very standard like run-of-the-mill cut and sci copy sci-fi yeah. movie avatar it could have been avatar yeah like heavy cgi i mean obviously there's a lot of cgi in this movie but it's it's like kind of hard to notice because it's very tastefully done yeah but because it was my boy denis it's a very unique vision for it and that was i think the main strength of the movie is that it was like very visually unique my gripes with the movie i was almost annoyed at how little they explain stuff me too that's where i played devil's advocate because not knowing anything i watched it and it, and I, it made it made, kind of made me want to know more it did so, for me too yeah I wanted to know more, and it's either like, well, will I go and I'm definitely going to watch the second one. I will, and, as I'll well. I, and I will probably go to the theater to watch it, which I didn't with the first first one. So I would say that was a success on there, I half because it it's got me now. It yeah. has it, really, but I think and I may even read the books. Well, that's big. I, that and big. I, I do like reading when I travel, so I, I there's a part of me now that wants to learn more because I think it's a cool setting. I won't read the books because I hate reading. Marvin might. <laughs> Marvin likes reading. Read. I love True. to read. I, I may I may read it. I actually think this may have been better off as a show. 
Mm. I could see it working as a show too. I feel like they need to maybe maybe just stop putting making books into movies. Maybe just make them into shows so you can really flesh it out even more so. I think it worked as a movie, and I think it'll work as a three-parter. I just think that they, yeah. like, and it made me want to watch it. I think they did a good enough job of it, but I am the type of person that I will, like, look up more stuff about it mm -hmm. after yep. the fact. The fact that I had to do that, I think, kind of is a little That's bit of a, a, a negative. because the, I like, like that, though. I, I like do, too. No, I do, too, but I don't think I general don't audiences like would. Yeah, um, most people, it's like the same thing with like uh, how many, how much Marvel stuff you have to watch to be caught up. Like most people don't want to have to watch. Yeah. It being optional is great, but when you right. have to people don't want homework. deeper, people don't want to do that, I think. The biggest negative thing I could say about this movie was the d dialogue audio was atrocious. There was, mo I had to rewind so many times because especially with his mom, you just like couldn't understand what they're fucking saying. A lot subtitles, of I, baby. I, I never had that problem, but I always watch things in subtitles. I don't. I so. hate subtitles. I They're, love subtitles. See, I'm a big sub. I think you know. Big. You, <laughs> They're super distracting to me, but I guess maybe I should adopt the strategy because I there was multiple times I just couldn't understand what the fuck they're saying in this movie. Um, so I had to look it up. I don't remember if they went over it or not. The lack of uh, like computers in the movie. What did mm. you guys think of that? I I, I never thought of that, but I actually didn't but, think of it. For a very sci-fi movie, there's not there's not much like, I, um, yeah. you know, high tech shit yeah. there, right? Well, everything. I looked it up, so they said uh, a little it's very more dystopian than dystopian in a way. Yeah, it is a little more than ten thousand years before the events of the movie. There was an intergalactic war between humans and artificial intelligence. Mm. So, regardless, humans won. Computers were banned. And ah, okay. They, they might want to explain. They should. So they don't trust. That, really. Yeah. <laughs> they don't trust, you know, computers, artificial Cause ev intelligence. Anything, so. Everything was very analog, even like the space controls. Like, right. you could it see. It was also very was organic. Very, the ships were like yeah. bugs, and there was the right. little fucking mosquito they they bot. Were, they were cool. Yeah, yeah the ships were. with the wings. Yeah, they, no, yeah, yeah. again, every, everything was very cool. I, I'm actually curious how they described the stuff in the books. I'd imagine very similar. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. That's cool to know, because this felt post-apocalyptic, and it is kind of post-apocalyptic, so, but yeah. it's post-apocalyptic. Well, yeah, it's, 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 sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say that it's the it's the bounce back from the post apocalypse, which you right. don't really see in post apocalypse movies. You just see the fallout and the shit. You never really see like, <laughs> oh hey, there was an apocalypse, but now we're like we've got ourselves now out of here. it. Yeah, we're building back better, baby. And it is very interesting to imagine the future, as far as like, because we always think future as high tech, everything's yeah. gonna be high tech. But then you see this, and it's like. There's no tech. Or like you said with Krypton. It was like, super high tech, let's be fair. But not, no, not it is in the way super we're high used tech, to. But not in the way that we're used but to it, at all. It was yeah. more like technology needs must, not like over the top technology yeah. where everyone's reliant yeah. on it. It's all technology used to survive, which yep. is Yeah. My Lord Duke. Where the fear is gone. Only I will remain. It's got an 8.0 on IMDb, which is very, excuse me, very high. Um, I would probably give it like a 7.5. I'm right in there. Uh, I give this an 8. I think it deserves uh, That's an eight. exactly what I was going <laughs> to give it as well. It's yeah. funny that I am the answer. It's full 8 for me. You know what? I agree. I'll give it an 8. If it was like flushed out a little bit more for yeah. me as far as like a first time Dune viewer. It would that, be higher, but that was the only thing uh, I it was ran definitely into. Enjoyable. That was the only thing I, I ran into a little bit. Like they give you enough where you could follow it, but like it was also n not enough to where there are lingering questions where I had to go look stuff up. I didn't have yeah, I to because I know it'll I be guess, answered, but I don't know if I enjoyed it more because I kept having to pause it to go and do work <laughs> stuff, and then that I, it was giving me that like I need to get back and see what happens sort yeah. of thing. Right. You well, know what I mean, I, but that made me enjoy the movie. Maybe I need to do that with movies more. Just pause it, walk away for things. Hey, sometimes you got to walk away. Look, Marvin hey. said he fucking started watching Flash I three, love da movies. three days ago. I can't. I have to do it in one sitting. That's the thing. <laughs> I couldn't wait three days. It'd have to be in the same like afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>